these kinds of things are pretty really interesting. So I'm I'm curious to see what's going to happen. Here. Oh, get hyped, guys! It's game number five for the regional championships: Ohio State versus Carlton. And it looks like they have gone with a warrior with zombie chow in it to help That's fight against really some of this smart. early game control. And Murloc Knights are going to be on Ohio State side as well as Equality. So they want to fight this long-term battle. And I can tell you what, in this matchup, I've played a lot of Control Warrior and I've played a lot of Control Paladin. The Control Paladins can easily trump this matchup by holding on to a couple of key cards. And utilizing their hero power to its fullest. Yeah. Yeah. Just you know? hit the butt. Hit That's the button. Just make a dude. Your button is stronger than their button eventually. Oh, they're playing Pilot Shredder, so they're even being much more mid-range centric and maybe less on the big game threats. It still could potentially be a Grim Patron Warrior with just Justicar thrown in here. Reno Jackson. And It could be Reno Jackson as well. We haven't seen a duplicate yet. And the Zombie Chow would indicate something like that. And Pilot Shredder is an interesting card to put in with both Zombie Chow and in Control Sobatus Warrior deck. And Shield Block. Like, these are weird cards. Hero Power. Super weird. Wow, what if it is one of those cases where it's Fatigue Warrior? <laughs> Maybe they were inspired by our show match. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, Reporting look up the next duty. Reno list. And it's like, oh. <laughs> Even with Reno in Warrior, one of the things that you want to be really careful of is also uh, your duplicates, because you do run duplicates. Yeah, like Despite would be def a definite duplicate card. Right, your removals, sometimes you play like two shield slams. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but everything else is debatable. Like you can run one execute and crush, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Pilot Shredder will get immediately answered by the Despite, or play his own Shredder perhaps. But I, I guess because you have to death spite and because you don't want your zombie chow to die for free maybe you go for death spite instead yeah i like that try to use the zombie chow to trade in the minion that comes out yeah of course we know that paladins always get shielded mini bot from pilot and shredder i'm still salty about that we won <laughs> did we win that game yeah we won that okay, game yeah. i'm still salty about that man well river crocolis quote uh isn't contested by that zombie chow and is ohio state maybe is this a blessing and king's turn for them do they feel comfortable loading up right here I, I think maybe you can take it a little bit slower to develop True Server Champion. Blessing of Kings just still dies on the board, and Warrior can be f like perfectly fine taking it slow. That's true, but you get, I mean, you would get 12 points of damage I out of that. Wonder. You get the Death Spite out of the way, the Zombie Chow's out of the way. The True Silver is definitely a great play. I'm not going to ever debate that. Mm -hmm. um, just the, What's the merits of the Blessing of Kings? Is it ever worth it right here? Uh, I would say if it was... If it's early in the game and you know for a fact they don't have, like, Execute, then sure. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about it, too, is the longer you wait, the more likely they are to have Execute. True. Yeah. But also, you can get a lot better trade out of Blessing and Kings as the game progresses. But can the Crocolisk potentially get even more value just by presenting a threat that chips for two every single turn? Yeah, I think so, because you have cards like Sludge Belcher, and if you... The thing about Bel Belcher that's really good with Blessing and Kings is, like, you think you kill the Belcher, and then the one two comes back as yeah. a as a four six, and then, or sorry, uh, a five six, and then and then you're back at square one with it. So I like utilizing that. Wow, Carl's even gonna clear out the uh, River Croc Res right away. Respect oh. for the Croc, man. Yeah, I mean a lot of that I think is because they have the second Death Spike and the Sylvanas in their hand. Yeah. So they're looking at this situation and going, when are we ever gonna kill this if we don't kill it right now? Yeah, that's true. But the thing is about that is. Because that's one less whirlwind effect, that's one less thing that you can threaten hero powers with. Yep. And as time goes on, it's gonna that's definitely gonna add up. You're gonna be like wishing you just had one more whirlwind. You had thirty one or thirty two cards of whirlwinds. I wonder If I were if I were to sometimes pick the ideal card that I've missed the most in Warrior games, it's like Revenge, yeah. it's the Whirlwinds, the Baron Geddens. Abomination. <laughs> I even throw it in there just to kill Paladins. You know what I love about the way this format works? Is that this is about the most pure form of Hearthstone you can get? It's like, the ultimate showdown. Like, kind of think about it. Like, I'm actually kind of thinking about this, like StarCraft builds, for instance, where you know what the other, what race the other guy's playing, but you don't know what build order he's doing. You know every one of his tools. Yeah. You just don't know what order the tools are going to come out in. Yeah. Like this is True. this is one of the most pure experiences I think you can get. Yeah. All right. Well, Belcher comes out there. Um, you know, interesting that you mentioned the the pure version of Hearthstone. It's like, you know, a lot of times that's what makes it so chaotic, uh, but yet fun at the same time. Because it's like, 
you don't know what to expect. And when you see Kazan Mystic come out, followed by duplicating two Kazan Mystics. Yeah. And it's like, well, what kind of game am I playing? Yeah. <laughs> Duplicated in Temple Mage alone. <laughs> what kind of game am I playing? What even is this? <laughs> That's certainly something I was thinking. I was like, what am I casting? Yeah. <laughs> there's two Kazan Mystics. There's three Kazan Mystics against Mage who's playing duplicate and it's not even working. Ooh. I would say draws a second Consecrate. I mean, the Consecrates in this matchup really are telling that they have two equalities. Like, there's no reason to play Consecrate against this deck. Like, they just don't get a lot of threats on board. Well, it's, it might not be something that they're used to. Like, they, they might not have thought about that. They only have five minutes. Something like, oh, let's not play Consecrate. Let might control Paladin, yeah. Might not be something that ever comes across in there. Also, it could be Patron. You, you, oh, we, we didn't play Consecrates in there. They played Patrons, like, oh, we, we lose. lose. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta Consecrate those two three threes. No, oh, I mean, you have equality, right? Sure, yeah. yeah. It's rarely ever a 2 3 three. Right, that's what I mean. Like, Let I think if you have two Consecrations, think. you definitely have two Equalities. Yeah. Right. I think um, from here, would you would you just <laughs> Hero Power? Quickly. I kind of don't mind Muster for Battle, uh, because it is forcing the second Whirlwind effect from the Despite now. So, like, the future implications of, of having that available, I think, mean a lot. Of knowing that the des both Despites are out of the way? Yeah. Using Muster for Battle to give yourself peace of mind. Yeah. But the question here, though, is can they force it just by using hero powers? And I think the answer might be yes. Yeah. Well, that feels bad. Playing out of the Peacekeeper for tempo. I mean, I don't know if it is Control Paladin. I think this might be just mid-range style of Paladin with more aggressive cards like Blessing of Kings. I feel yeah. like Control Paladin is like what the Pyromancer. No. Well, Guardian well, of Kings. There's really like one card that makes it Control Paladin. A lot of times it's double equality and Pyromancer. Like that, you put in those two cards, like a second equality and a Pyromancer, all of a sudden you can call it Control Paladin. Maybe an, an extra, like some type of heal, like an extra yeah, Guardian of Kings or two land hands. It's all relative. The whole point is that you still control the state of the board. Yeah. But who cares if it's mid ranger control? The play who style cares? <laughs> Just very adamant about that one. <laughs> Let me think. Either way, I feel like Ohio State is just, right now they seem to have the better situation. And Carlton's hand is very good right now. But so is Ohio State's. And I think long term, I, the hero power really makes that big of a difference. I think Ohio State's a little bit sad they used uh, the, the Peacekeeper, yeah. number one. And now it's like, ah, mm. shucks. Because <laughs> now they have Peacekeeper and True Silver. And... sticks. <laughs> what a Follow. quack. Just taking it out of context, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, move quickly. You know Just what I would call that there. first peacekeeper? Quack. What? Why is he a quack? <laughs> he's not claiming to be a doctor. Yeah, but he's certainly not a peacekeeper. That's just a hypocrite. No, but it's, he's not doing his job. He, he, he used it on a Wormers agent that dropped out of a shredder. <laughs> He's not going to address the doctor at all. He's just going to equip Trooper Trooper and pass. That's interesting. Is this a situation where you want he's your pushing opponent tempo. to Harrison? Oh, my goodness. That, that would be really strange. I think he's pushing. If you do, then you want to swing with it, right? So you at least get one charge and just leave it there. That's what I'm saying. Maybe you want them to draw two cards. Oh. I I, I don't know, man. I think you have an aggressive that's, hand. I think that's really, really creative of you to say, but I think that's also a little bit too out of the box. Carlton has an aggressive hand. I mean, if this was turn nine, all of a sudden, they'd be looking at potential yeah, boom body. I think that's something that you have to consider as well. Like, how do you get aggressive? And I think the way you line it up is to play Sylvanas right here. Yeah, I 100% to I agree with that. I think Sylvanas is really kind of the key that can unlock the way to win this game. Wow, that's big too. Now, when that gets hit, do you just think the Grom, you see two Peacekeepers out of the way. Oh, man. Let's do it. Wow, they're going to go for it. Oh. Carlton says, answer this. And Ohio State, their hand their is their hands completely empty right now. They actually do not have an answer to Grom right now. What did they get off the top? Owl. Owl. Hey, it's hey. kind of an answer. Anticlimactic. Hey, still a 4-8. Four, four, eight. Eight. Yeah, that's a big that's minion that they still got to get through. It's nothing to ignore. Yeah. And with Sludge Belcher you're inevitably going to be protecting the boy from this point on. And then it's almost it's also just as mm. simple as Carlton having an own silence. Like if they tech in an owl in their control warrior, like what Show likes to do and a few others. Dr. Boom gets signed for seven, yeah. and that's lethal. This is a dangerous spot for Ohio State. They are uh, their their backs are against the they're in the corner right now. 
and they're getting swung at. This is bad news for them. And for Carlson to come back after being cornered with the classes that they have is, would be surprising, to say the least. You wouldn't expect Palin versus Warrior to go like this. However, that said, Warrior is going super aggressive into stuff, and if it doesn't work out, Paladin is almost certainly going to pull out way ahead. In true Warrior fashion, they can just go berserk and start swinging away. Yeah, a Consecrate is going to be used here to take off the body of the Dr. Boom, and I mean, they really don't have anything else to do. They have four mana spells in their hand, plus land hand, so they're in a rough spot. You, Alex, in the face. So you can get 8 8 on board. Or is it better just Sludge Belcher and take it a little bit slower? Prob probably go for the Sludge Belcher and the Fiery War Axe. I mean, at this point, you could realistically be using your life a lot to, to try to get major value okay. out of the weapons. Um, and just having the Alex Straza maybe to just gain you a few points of life to continue to, to not fear damage could be a big difference. And the Sludge Belcher is just more problematic for Ohio's to hang out anyway, I think. Fair enough. Or so they think. Unless I wonder if they're going to play the complete control game and just kill both minions. It might be the better play to protect the Belcher. I think that's ultimately what you want to do. Well, with that shield slam in hand, they definitely wanted to armor up afterwards. Yeah, but a little sloppy, but it's fine. I think in the grand scheme of things, I think, I think the I mean, the nerves are definitely playing a factor here. Yeah, they're they're thinking a couple steps ahead of them right now. They're not even worried about the armor. They're like, how do we trade this board? Yeah, they have execute. Boom, being drawn is a pretty big deal. There's 10 damage on the board. Yeah, but how else are they going to generate 5 with a weapon sure. swing already in hand? You have to cool Taskmaster for 2. Oh, cool Taskmaster? Taskmaster Bash is yeah. definitely yeah. something you can play <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely... Hmm. It's not uncommon. But I don't know if you can get it... Can you get it with land hands? Maybe. Land hands kind of resets the damage being dealt. But you don't develop anything. That's fine if you can draw into just a quality. And do you have a better time to use land hands? The other thing to think about is that they've used both Aldor Peacekeepers. They've used a Consecration. Mm. True Silver Champions start to swing away. They have to deal with the threats on board. I mean, are they just going to lose too much stuff trying to make up this ground? Well, what's really interesting is if they use Land on Hands, they actually Alex aggressively and put them down to... Alex is... Yeah. The Land Hands is negated. Yeah. Because they bring them back down to 15 with Alex. Here we go. It's boom okay. time. And uh, this is, I mean, they have Execute so that they can deal with the uh, boom. But do they also go aggressive on the other end? I don't know. This is all so, this is all starting to get pretty crazy. Play so long as it just starts swinging. Right, but, you know, are you potentially backing yourself into a corner if they have, like, a big consecration play? Just some sort? quality, yeah. Yeah. It's definitely things to consider. And they have seen an Iron Beak Owl, too, so the Sylvanas is likely to be safe in the situation. I mean, one of the ways that Warrior can can really dominate this matchup, too, is saving Sylvanas and Shield Slam for the Tyrion turn. Yes. Um, that is the usual way you can yeah. win just decisively. But is it likely that you're going to get a turn where it's just Tyrion? I mean, yeah, a lot of times you get a 50-50 where it's Tyrion or a 1-1, but oh man, is that worth that many resources? There's a lot to invest on a, on a Dr. Boom, but again, they just have such a big lead right now. Yeah. Ohio State's really the one that has to close this out right now. Go oh, ham. They have to find answers to this board state. Carlton is driving the action at the moment. They're forcing Ohio State into uncomfortable spots. I think you hit base with weapon too, maybe. In case you draw another well, weapon. Well, you only have one fiery war. Yeah, you only have a fire war. Potentially a, fire war. a gore hound left. Oh, you just pulled death spike. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Is that a quality? Oh, jeez. Oh, and boom bots oh, do wonderful gosh. and magical things. Okay, 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 okay. So, <laughs> um, you have to equality and, and push in the 1 1 first, then use two silver mm. champion. Hold on, I, I can't see the board. Um, okay, there we go. And then use the one one boom bots. You don't want to give boom bot to your opponent. How do right. you avoid doing that? Um, do, do you hope the first boom bot hits? That's the it. Target just go for it. Okay. I think so. I was thinking that maybe there's a sequence that you can kind of avoid because if you look at any way, mm. the first boom bot always has a risk of killing the Sylvanas. Yeah. So I actually think you want the one one on board in case that situation happens. Okay. But looking at this hand, they need to cast lay on hands. Like, they can't afford to uh, to lose to just a couple points of damage. So yeah. they're going to have to just hope the boom bot rolls correctly on the first one. Okay. Uh. 
is oh, definitely a way to do it. Oh my god, now they can kill Sylvanas. No. Miss the crops, they're gonna consecrate instead though. 